What's up everybody? This is John Raymond coming to you from the workshop and today we are in the second part of a little series that we're doing on how to practice scales and actually have fun doing it. Uh, in the first video, which you can check out linked below, we talked all about having a specific parameter of notes to work with, but essentially then improvising with those different parameters to get a better knowledge of the scale, to build technique, and to do it in a little more of an engaging way that exercises that improvisational muscle that we use when we're improvising. And today, in this video, we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna talk about three different ways you can actually start to put this in more of a musical context. And I think each of these three ways, if you can work on scales in any of them, they're gonna make them even more engaging and help you translate this kind of practice from the practice room into a real life situation. So first, if we take any of those parameters or cells or groups of notes that we were working on from the first video, and we start to apply them by actually playing over a chord, that, believe it or not, as simple as it is, can start to trigger this kind of information that you're working on by yourself in a more musical context, right? So last time we were taking these different parameters and groups of notes in the key of C concert. So what I'm gonna do is just give myself a C major chord and play some of these different kinds of groups of notes over them. And again, we're, we're improvising over this, but we're now connecting the things that we're playing to the sound of the chord that we're playing on, okay? So it'll sound something like this. Okay, so in addition to playing over one chord, the next step really would be playing over a couple different chords or a progression of chords, right? And so this will help us start to work on these same kind of scalar ideas that we're improvising with, but in a different musical context where there's a little more going on, right? So let's just take something as simple as a 2-5-1 progression in the key of C concert. So we're thinking D minor seven, G7, C major, okay? And I'm gonna play my scale patterns only in the key of C concert, right? And I'm still gonna be improvising with these patterns, but I'm gonna be doing so over this progression of chords and hearing how this sounds, hearing where my ear wants to take things. And again, I think this helps us work on these scales in a very engaging way because we not only have to be concerned with what the specific group of notes is that we're improvising with, but now we're concerned with how does that fit over the harmony, right? How does that kind of signal a cadence and a resolution when we get to that major chord, right? So here's me improvising over that 2-5-1 progression in C concert. We'll see how it goes. All right, last but not least, let's take this one step further. We've done it over a chord, we've done it over a chord progression, now let's do it over a whole tune, right? And really for this, you probably wanna pick a song that exists in one tonal key center that you're working on that scale for, right? So, in this case, let's just take a tune like Take the A Train, right? Really simple here, and 
what I'm going to try to do is use those scale patterns in any way that my ear is hearing over the course of the entire tune. Right? Now, I know what you're saying. You're probably thinking to yourself, wait, but John, what about that two dominant chord in the third and fourth measures of the A section and in the last half of the bridge as well? I hear you. I hear you. But let's keep in mind that that two dominant chord is still in the context of one key center, and that is, in this case, C major, right? So I don't necessarily want to play an F natural concert, which would be in my key of C major when I get to those chords, but I can still work with the same parameter and same group of notes that I'm improvising with, just avoid that note, right, in that certain spot. So here's me playing over Take the A Train. I'm going to try to use this same idea, still working this scale through and through but doing so in a very musical, improvised way. Here we go. With each of these different ideas of how to work on a scale right, in a more practical way, the goal for all of them is you're wanting to develop freedom using that specific group of notes or pattern that you're working on. right? You should feel the sense that you could do anything with that no matter where your ear would take you. And if you can get to that point in every key, you've really gotten onto something and you're really mastering these scales without having to do them in a rote or boring way in any way, shape, or form. Last thing, remember, even as you're doing these exercises in a little more of a musical context, don't forget about technique. Don't forget about that flow of notes or the clarity of notes to get every note to sing and resonate well on your instrument. Don't forget about playing with good time, right? All those things are crucial to you getting the most out of practicing these scales and, and the ways that you're going about them. So I hope these two videos on how to practice scales and have fun doing them have been helpful for you guys and I hope it can maybe spur on some new ideas for how you go about working on scales in the practice room. And frankly, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Um, if you want to tag me on your social media handles uh, on Instagram or on Facebook. I'd love to check out what you guys are doing and even repost some of the stuff that you guys share. Um, feel free to leave a comment or a question if you've got one and we'll see you guys next time.